And that's when we went into hiding place. Our hiding place was under a twin bed, as big as a twin bed, in my aunt's house. And when a Gentile found a Jew and turned him in, they got a kilogram of salt as a reward. And then he did. And when the Ukrainians were no more useful to them, they were told there's not going to be an independent Ukraine. And that's when they formed a partisan group, fighting the Germans behind the lines and disposing of a hiding Jew whenever they could find one. They were called Benderovtsis after their leader, Bendera. Our hiding place was very, it was small, as, like I said, as big as a, a twin bed. There were eight of us. My aunt, her five-year-old granddaughter, my two cousins, my father and mother, my sister and I. My aunt had a five-year-old granddaughter. And one day, this little five-year-old girl said, if you're not going to give me a drink of water, I'm going to scream. Having no choice, we gave her urine to drink. She never asked for, other, for another drink. It's really much easier to get along without food than without water. So after three weeks being on the ground, we had to get out. We decided every night two will go out in pairs so the rest could stretch. My sister was a country teacher 14 kilometers from the city. Whenever the farmers would come to the city, they would eat and sleep in our house. My mother was very good to them. So we figured if we could get to that village, they know us, they are friends, they'll hide us. We were dreamers. And somehow, my sister and I got out of the ghetto, and that was quite a sight to see, because the ghetto was covered with all kind of religious articles that was one thing they had no use for. Everything else they took away. And somehow we got to that village where my sister used to teach. People we knew chased and threatened us. We heard there are partisans around, but unfortunately there are two kinds of partisans. Russian partisans that would welcome us, Ukrainian partisans, they would kill us. The languages are very similar, and we spoke both. One night, when nobody would let us in anymore, we heard them. We got frightened and hid. We were very cold, wet, and hungry. We decided to walk to the forest. Maybe they'll be warmer there. When we approached the forest, we saw a little white house with smoke coming out of the chimney. What a beautiful sight to see how we envy the people inside that small, warm house. My sister suddenly said, we can't go there. They are drinking. They are singing. We started to run in snow to our waist, about a half a kilometer. I sat down and refused to go any further. I said to her, you do as you please. I'm going back to that little white house. Something was pulling me there. She followed me reluctantly. We knocked at the door, and this lovely woman came to the house. And she said, welcome. Please come in. And we were quite a sight to see. 
we couldn't figure out what's happening here, but I didn't care anymore. The majority in the Ukraine are Greek Orthodox. There are some Catholics, but I never heard of Protestants. And in this village, you could find one family, a Protestant, maybe two families. But these people had two rooms, including the kitchen, three children, and a couple, and then they took us in. And we all slept in the same room. When her husband came home, she said to him, I took in two young girls for the night. And he had a deep voice, and I was frightened. He said, you did the right thing. We couldn't figure it out. But when the couple got ready to go to bed, they both knelt and prayed in their own words, dear God, save the Israelite remnants. That's the first time I ever heard anybody refer to us as Israelites. In that house, I learned that not every Gentile is a Christian. These people were real Christians. People from neighboring villages would come to their two-room house to worship every Sunday. They were people from different denominations, Pentecostals, Baptists, Seventh-day Adventists, Evangelists, and others. The next day, a Polish Baptist farmer came and took me to his farm. When the Ukrainians started to kill the Poles, for whom they had no love either, the family I was staying with had to leave to the city. I followed them a few days later, but they couldn't keep me there. So one day, on a Sunday, they took me to the big city of Rovno to the meeting house. That's what they call their church, to see if somebody would help me there. As we part, parted company with these people, pretending not to know each other, we went into the church. I waited for the reverend to finish his sermon. And I went over to him and I asked him if he could help me get some work because my parents were killed by the partisans and I'm an orphan and I'm all by myself. He called over a director of a candy factory and asked him to give me a job. He said, I'll be glad to come tomorrow to the factory. Well, tomorrow is a long time from today. Where am I going to sleep? I said to him, I have no place to stay. He called over this man, and he said, this sister is going to sleep in your house today. Bring her with you to the factory tomorrow. I learned not to be afraid of these people, to tell them who I am. If they couldn't or wouldn't help me, they always found somebody that would. The next day, his wife made sandwiches for us, and we went to work. He went to his job. I went to the office to look for the director of the factory. When I reminded him of his promise he made to me yesterday in church. He said to me, I'm very sorry. You can see I'm very busy now. Please come back in two weeks. Well, two weeks is a life sentence. Having no choice, I said to him, may I speak to you in private? He took me into his office, and I said, you know, I am Jewish. His eyes popped out. He said, you are an Israelite. If so, I have to help you. You got to come from the Ukraine to appreciate that. As a Polish